Namaste. My name is Kamala and today I would like to share with you some variations for a posture that you may have done before called bridge pose. So I'm going to show you some variations that we can do with bricks. So let's get started. So bridge pose or Setu Bandhasana or also known as Setu Bandha is a belly up back bend and it's a little bit easier than pushing up into a back bend because we're only lifting our pelvis. Okay, so to get warmed up, I'd like us to start um, just doing a dynamic. So we're going to roll up one vertebra at a time, tucking the tailbone, pressing into the heels, rolling up to the top. And you want to aim to get all the way to your seventh cervical vertebra. That is that bump that you feel at the base of your neck. Now, if you can't roll up that far, no problem. Just roll as far as you can, but see if you can articulate the vertebra of your spine to roll up one vertebra at a time to your maximum and then rolling down. Really trying to create some space in the spine on the roll down. And so this is one way that you can prepare to go into this posture. It's also good if you're just generally warmed up for any other with any other warm-ups that you might happen to know. Okay, so the, the pose without any props looks something like this. There's different variations with the hands. Some people like to interlace the fingers. Some people like to grab the heels. And you can also place the hands under the pelvis like this. And that is all fine. Um, but it's all a little bit more work than what I wanted to do today. Because I wanted to show you how we can use bricks to make this posture a little bit more restorative. So I'm going to use two bricks and I'm going to use them both on what I call the low setting of the brick. So I'm going to take the two bricks and place them underneath my sacrum bone on low setting. And as you can see, this is, makes for a very much more restorative posture. Just the weight of my body is resting on the bricks and I can enjoy the back bend without the work. And so it's not that one way is right or the other way is wrong. It's just that there's different um, moods of the same pose. Okay, from here, we can do some variations, just like we can do if we were holding ourselves with our hands. We can raise one leg at a time. And we can also raise both legs. We can interlace our hands. We want to keep lifting up on this armpit chest area, keeping the neck long. I do want to note that if you do practice this variation of Setu Bandha, that this is a inversion. Actually, now we are in another posture known as Viparita Karani, this posture right here. I'm going to cover this posture and its variations in another video. However, sticking with Setu Bandha, from here, here we have other options. We can actually remove and only use one brick. And we can actually straighten our legs. This also makes for a very restorative uh, practice. This is more like a supported Shavasana, actually. So this is just when, in like, 
in the afternoon when you just want to chill, maybe your back has been, you've been sitting a lot. Um, this is a really nice counter pose to uh, sitting, a lot of sitting. The other thing to note is you can do this with only one brick. So this would be low setting. This would be medium setting. And this would be the highest setting. The highest setting obviously giving you the deepest back bend. It just really depends on your body, your proportions, and what kind of practice you're after. To come out of Setu Bandha, you always want to roll to the right side and push yourself up with your left hand to direct blood flow away from the heart. Another variation I'd like to show you is utilizing the wall. So here I'm going to measure approximately my leg distance from the wall. Placing one block into the wall, I had it on medium setting, but I could use any of the settings, low or high. And I'm going to come in in this way. If you've been to a, um, a Yingar yoga class, you may have seen the benches, Setu Bandha benches, where it's like a long wooden bench, and you can actually tie yourself into the pose. And you could tie your legs together with a strap if you wanted to hold this for a long time. Another way to do it, you could have this up on high setting, and you could keep your other brick on the setting that where it is. Two bricks do not have to be on the same setting, but this is a little bit of a, a deeper back bend. These bricks are narrow, so I feel like they're a little bit less stable. There we go. And for the deepest version, would actually be with no block at all down here. Okay, after that depth of a back bend, I'm feeling like my body needs to do Supta Baddha Konasana, which this posture is a great neutralizer. After back backbending poses, it's good to neutralize by doing something symmetrical. In addition, you could take a spinal twist. And I do recommend that after this posture. Especially if you did the deepest version. If you just did a shallow version of that pose, you might not need a twist, but it's always good to give yourself a twist after a back bend and, and maybe a brief rest. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. I also want to let you know that I am teaching online on Zoom five days a week. So if you're interested in joining me, please drop me a comment below. Namaste. Thank you very much.